welcome to Hook Connections. Um, as usual, we always have great guests on our show, and um, today's no different. I'm Barbara Hook with Hook Connect. Um, we connect you to the honest service providers and contractors. Um, we do the research and qualify them. We have a private, private investigator on board that does that further research when needed. And today our guest is Scott Wise with Scotty's Brew House. Um, I had the privilege of um, having him speak at an event on the South Side yesterday. And Scott, just give the audience some idea of, you know, a, a short version of why you're doing what you're doing and how things have changed. Well, I started, thank, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, I started, I opened this business in 1996. I was a 21-year-old kid that didn't know anything, and I only know a little bit more than I did back then. Uh, you know, I just, I got into the business because it was something that uh, I just had this passion for serving people, like just to make people happy and smile and tell a joke. And I don't know, I just, it kind of, it's a, it's a little, you have to be a little bit crazy to really love this industry because, you know, it's, it's a lot of work for a little, little money. Um, but I just, I loved it. And so I opened on Ball State's campus in 1996. And from there, you know, there's there's bumps in the roads, and I won't go through the whole story, but we're celebrating our 20th anniversary next year. Uh, we're opening our 15th location in uh, a month, and we've got three more locations that are opening in the next four months. And I'm blessed, and things yeah. are great. And uh, as I <laughs> alluded to, one of the hiccups probably would have been, um, you know, I, God threw me a curveball. I, I, I had, I got a brain infection um, about three years ago, four years ago, and almost took me down. And it was a very scary situation. A, you know, a family man with four kids and a wife and 1,500 employees that really count on me to do my thing. Uh, and it was an eye-opening, awakening experience. It was something that I, I feel like God was kind of tugging on me a little bit, saying, you need to slow down, you need to take your time, you need to make sure the family is first, and I wasn't, I don't think I was paying attention, I wasn't listening, and that's, it just, my recollection is that he kind of said, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna force you to slow down, and so, when I went through that, it really changed the whole dynamic of my company. It, I went from, you know, I wanna grow, and I wanna get, I wanna keep opening restaurants, and I want this kind of profit, and I wanna keep, you know, and, and it really, once I hit that experience, and I was out, I couldn't really work for about, six to eight weeks I had to rely on other people and it really just allowed me to kind of see the big the bigger picture which was so in the beginning it was more let's make as much money as we can where now your whole attitude towards how you grow your business has changed it has I mean it was you know you're in business so your your goal is always to make money Absolutely. even even still today mm -hmm. uh, but it just the way that I ran the company before and the way that I run the company now, it just changed the way that I wanted to, the person that I wanted to be. And it was, there was a home life piece of it where I wanted to say, all right, at five o'clock or six o'clock, when you go home, Scott, you turn the phone off, you be with your children, you be, you be with your wife, you, you, you're connected. Mm -hmm. And, and then in the other aspect for with my, with my workforce, I wanted to, to have these, you know, a lot of our employees are, transient. They're with us for six months, a year, two years, and they move on. We're not typically a career oriented, you know, we hire 1,500 people, probably out of those 1,500, only 300 are full-time employees that are with us for a long time. And I decided, I've got all these young minds with me, why can't I make them, why can't I try to teach them more about life? And, and the big one is just doing good in our world, doing some kind of philanthropic charity work. And part of that is just my church and, and the God piece of this. But the other part is just being good human beings. And so I was going through the experience I went through. I decided to use that soapbox, that, that, that stance that I now can, gra that I can sit on. And, and then also understanding that I've got 1,500 young minds. If I can just do some kind of impression with them and I can say, okay, once you leave me and you're 10 years down the road and you're doing something else, you still remember back when you worked for Scotty's for a couple years and you got involved with the Thanksgiving movement that we did or you did a Habitat for Humanity <coughs> or you, you worked in one of the dozens of charities that we mm -hmm. work with. It just resonates with you. And so going through that whole experience, it changed, the change that we made was <coughs> I, I was a guy that never decided, I never wanted to have a mission statement because I felt like that was something you had to do. 
and I was and I was going to fight the system. I was I, I'm an independent guy. I don't have to do it because I think mission statements are just a some BS thing that you're supposed to put together. And after I went through my experience, I said, you know what? I've got a vision. I want to I want to create a vision statement, not a mission. And the vision is. I'm going to do good in my world, and I'm going to I'm going to donate my mind, body, and soul every 90 days to something. And so, all we don't require our, our team to do it, but I ask them every 30 days or every 90 days to get involved. And we we offer them different kinds of philanthropics to get involved in. And I just feel like that kind of effort that we make is trying to just put a little good back in the world. And if and if. And if it does good for the the restaurant, then that's great. But for, in my, Absolutely. you know, our, our goal is to just try to help the communities that we're in. We're we're a partner. Well, and you know, when you talk about the employees and how you make a difference in their lives, I actually happen to know one very closely. It's my daughter's um, sister-in-law that works at the Southport Crossing location, and her first day of work, she won the tickets to uh, I think it was qualifications. Um, and she made the comment to me yesterday. She said, you know, it really doesn't matter what I make here. It's working for a leader like Scott. That's awesome. You know, so when you know that you make a difference for people, they don't really care because you're making a difference in her life, you know, and she, you know, she's told me some stories of things that have occurred and she's just in awe, you know, that She's worked in a lot of restaurant industry as a server, and none has been like Scott. Well, I'll get an email every once in a while from staff that'll just say, you know, because I every every comment that a guest sends to our company, I read, whether it's through Facebook, Twitter, uh, they just go to our e-comment on our website and send it. I read every single one, and not only do I read it, but I respond back to the guest and I say, hey, thank you, I appreciate the feedback. If it's a if it's a constructive one, I say, you know what, we we're, we're going to work on this. Or if it's a positive one. And let's say they talk about your niece and they say, she did a great job. Just wanted to let you know. Well, I thank them for that. And then I email the, the employee. Every one of our employees, every one of our restaurants, 1,500 employees, 15 restaurants. I take the time. It takes, it takes a day and a half for me to go through all of it. Wow. Every week. But it, to me, it's that important because the feet, when I get, all I have to do is get one message back from an employee that says, I can't believe you did this. I've worked in this industry for 5, 10, 15 years, and I've never had an employer say thank you. Absolutely. You know, we, we, it's such a, <laughs> two, the two, is, two easiest words in the English language to say, and we just are so, I don't know, we're so busy. We're so using our phones, and we're so Absolutely. telling people what they're doing wrong, but we're, we're so slow to say, hey, great job. And so, I don't know, it's just, when I get a message like that from a staff member, and I've even had a few of the staff members that forwarded to a parent, they just say, hey, look at what my boss did. And I've had a few of those parents that have contacted me and said, I just want to let you know what kind of impact you've made in our lives. And it's those kind of things. Absolutely. You know, it's not the serving the burgers and the fries and the beers. and the, Anybody you know, that's can great. do burgers that's what, and fries. I mean, right? you got to have that. you got to have that, that income. But when you get those kind of messages, it just, it to makes me, it all oh, worth man, it. it just, it just stokes the fire. Well, Scott, we need to take a short um, a short pause, a little intermission here, and we will be back here in a little bit. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty, and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret, only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it, because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 
14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wathard Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Welcome back to Hook Connections. Um, today our guest is Scott Wise. Um, I, you know, want to thank Logan Street Signs and Banners and Wofford Theater for allowing this to take place. We're almost to the point of celebrating a year on the show. Um, Scott, I would really like for you to go into detail um, all the great things that are happening happening at the recently opened location in Noblesville. Yeah, we're so excited. It's uh, been a long time coming. We wanted to come up in this area for a while. We just wanted to find the right spot and a couple things happened, uh, good timing, and we opened at 146th and Hazeldale, um, right in the plaza that's right in front of Kroger. Okay. Um, great spot, it's got, um, we're all ages, so it's family friendly. We've, we've, now in our new models, we build a kid's corner, so there's a corner of the restaurant that you can come in and your kids can play with toys, and we put a TV back in that area, and there's a chalkboard that they can write on. Um, we've got private di private rooms available for reservations, so if somebody wants to have a, a holiday party or a company party, you can reserve rooms. Um, we deliver catering from this location. We even, starting Monday, start delivering dinner. So if you live in the Noblesville Very area and you, cool. want, and you want dinner, you just go online to our website. You can order online. It's simple, uh, quick. Our producer will be starting to order from you now. <laughs> so yeah, it's, we're, we're, we're very excited. Things are going great. It's got, we've got a great outdoor patio. It's, it's a beautiful restaurant. We put a lot of money into it. Um, I've got some great partners that are with us on that project and it's, it's just been a, it's been an awesome thing to be a part of. And you know, we love, you know, my, my focus as I've grown the company is to find these little, not, you know, these towns where the big chains don't come into. Right. That's where I, you know, that's where we thrive. So when we went to Southport or when we went to Brownsburg, you know, we picked these towns that are communities that are just full of families and hardworking people that want to support and have a great local restaurant, and that's what we are. And you know, I don't care what anybody says on the weekends or almost from Thursday through Sunday. This economy is not bad. Oh, it's fantastic. It's, no, there you will know, never be. There pre is not but, a restaurant that is not full. Oh, it's we're we're you know I, when the stock market does its little dance every once in a while, it makes me a little nervous because I just remember back to two thousand seven and kind of the pain that I went through with the restaurant. Right. But no, it's it's fantastic, and I'll I'll tell you, coming into the foot, this is our best time of year, football right, season. Football I mean, season. you got. Once the high schools and Noblesville and all these different schools get out of games and they can come over and have food or, you know, every Monday night we have all-you-can-eat wings. So you come in and watch Monday Night Football. Do you ever do, like, Colts parties at oh, any yeah, of locations? Oh, yeah, yeah. We live music uh, on Colts days. Um, our downtown location is awesome. Right. So if you're, if you're oh, going I've to a game, it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. We, our patio is huge and we always <laughs> have live music before and right. go fill up with a couple Bloody Marys before the, before kickoff. Well, and yesterday while we were at the meeting, um, but right as we were walking in the door, I noticed the menu change because I know last month uh, it had that <laughs> Oreo burger, the which Oreo I just... Burger. I Deep just it was for the state fair. It was a I know, but the I state just, fair. just seeing an Oreo melted over it. A cheeseburger is just not my cup of tea. But did you see our one that's that started oh, yesterday? Oh yeah, yeah. And I gotta try it because it's got bologna on it and it's got an egg on it. Um, fried that's, bologna, yeah. yeah, fried bologna burger, and 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 a dollar of every order goes to No Kid Hungry. So there's an organization cool. that is feeding the homeless children all over America, and we decided to pair up with them. We said, why don't we let's make our burger. Let's do a kickback and let's do a dollar of everyone that gets ordered and, and give it to this organization. Every so burger. Every burger that gets ordered. So every burger that's the fried bologna burger. Right. So and we we sell typically all of our restaurants burgers of the month usually equate to about a three thousand to five thousand number of sales wow. for a month. So if we can give five grand to this organization, I think it you know it'd make a great impact. Absolutely. The other thing that's great about the Noblesville location is craft beer. So not only do we have thirty beers on tap. 
but we sell our own beer. So we, we make our own beer in Broad Ripple, Three Wise Men Brewing Company. You guys got to come to Wham Fest next year. You just have to. <laughs> and if you want to, to if you want to come in and grab a growler of beer, we sell it for carryout. So you can stop by the Noblesville location, grab a couple growlers, take them with you. How long does a growler last? The growlers last about, you know, six days, about as much as you'd want to let, let it go. But we're putting in a, a new canning system. So it's a 32-ounce can that we we. Uh, use CO2 and get all the oxygen out of it. We seal it. We put it's like a drill press. We put the press down and spins it, seals the cap, and those are good for 60 days. So they're and they're great. I mean, they throw away aluminum cans, so you can. So come are those going to be available in liquor stores? Soon, not yet, but okay. that's the that's the project that's on the horizon. Yeah, you got to talk to Big Red. They got they got every they got <laughs> all the liquor stores wrapped up. Wow. That's pretty impressive, and I've actually been to one of the tastings. Um, I came on um, marketing media night, you know, when all the social media yeah, experts yeah. were there. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's a blast. We do you know? we do a different seasonal every month, so we just kicked off our Oktoberfest. Uh, came out this week, so right. you can get the Oktoberfest only at the brewery this week, and then next week it'll be at all the Scotty's locations. Very cool. Very cool. But, you, you know, all these wild drinks and all these <laughs> wild recipes, and I don't know who the who comes up I've got up a director of beverage. Recipes. His name's Mark Sontag, and the guy's just brilliant. He's, yeah. you got to find someone that likes food and alcohol, and, and he does, and so. Well, just make sure on the bottom of your cans you put good sayings, okay? <laughs> yeah. I like, mean, you know, that just, that, that just, that Sun was, King just took it, you they know? They did. They did a good job with that. They did a great job with it. So, um, I just, you know, how... How are you managing? I mean, I know you have a huge team of people that help you on the office side. You know, you know, you have the marketing team because Bruce is just amazing. Yeah. You know, he, you know, it takes a while to get in contact with you, but he is just <laughs> all about making that connection and making it work. He's you know, good. he's great, um, and he just wants to make sure everything is perfect. So, and you're crazy. <laughs> On Twitter. True. So if anybody wants to follow you on Twitter, what what it's do they should they follow? At Brew House, if you go, if you want to follow, if you, I always warn people that I'm not always politically correct. I might right. offend you every once in a while because a joke that I think is funny, you might not think is funny. So, right. So usually it doesn't get offensive until about 10 o'clock on a Friday night after I've had my third beer. That's when I, that's when the jokes really seem to be really funny to me. Right. And they're not always funny. My lawyer and my HR department always tell me that they're not always funny to everybody else and I need to tone it down. Yeah. So, How fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so we got the Noblesville location. And what do you think is probably one of the biggest locations that you're going to open in the very near future? I mean, the one that we're really excited about is Florida. You know, yeah. going down to Punta Gorda, um, which is this little city right between Fort Myers and Sarasota. That was hit pretty bad by a hurricane several years and ago. And they 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 were, and it's got a um, it's Fisherman's Village is where we're located. We're going to be located. Uh, they've already started construction. We were hoping to be open by November. I think that's probably a pipe dream. I think that it's probably going to be January. Is would be my guess. Um, but man, we're excited. Do you know to as I said, right I, on I like, the water. Oh, it's it's the view. Our view out the all the sides of the windows are going to be sunset on the water. Wow. You can pull your boat up and park if you want to get out and get... I, it, to have people come and get carry out from a boat is just going to be something I've never experienced before, and I'm just, I'm really excited. Once we get that one open, you know, my goal then is to start branching out in the Florida area and start kind of coming up the south, southern eastern seaboard. So if I can get Fort Myers and Sarasota and then kind of hit, I'd love to hit a couple college Panama towns, City. Gainesville, Panama City, and then even sneak up the seaboard to get up to Charleston and Charlotte. And, right. You know, so t I'm trying to take it step by step. I'm not trying to try not to bite off more than I can chew. So I'm just going to, let's get Punta Gorda <laughs> open first. And then once that happens, right. then we'll go, go to the next well, one. Well, and we're, we're, this is also going to be aired on radio too for five days, Monday through Friday. I believe it's either seven or eight o'clock. I can't remember, but, um, tell everybody, um, who is not viewing us right now or won't be viewing us, how people can get a hold of your team. You know, if they have questions, Phone number, website, and who to contact. You know, the easiest way to get a hold of us is just go to our website. It's scottysbrewhouse.com. Uh, and on that page, there's a contact link. And you can you can find out all the info. You can either go to the locations link, and you can find out every location, every address, every phone number. And there's a contact for every general manager. 
There's a catering and par private party page. So if you want catering information or if you want a catering menu or if you want a full menu, all that stuff is listed on the website. And then if you want to get a hold of somebody at the corporate office, there's a contact link and it'll show every every person that's on our team. So, so if you, you don't want, hide anything from anybody. No, if, you want, if you want to get a hold of me, my web my email's on there. If you want to get a hold of, you want a donation, if a, a donation request, if you want a job, apply on our website. Yeah. So. All right. Well, it's time to take um, our last break for the day. So we will be right back and um, we, we welcome and enjoy having Scotty on, on our show. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Welcome back to Hook Connections. I'm Barbara Hook with Hook Connect, um, where we research that service provider for you. We are a free resource. You don't have to pay a membership dues to call and get an honest contractor. Um, welcome back, Scott. Um, it's 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 so good to have an inspirational business owner that um, is on our show because that just tells people that there are good guys out there. You know, <laughs> um, probably the most exciting that I think. You know, that Indiana is huge basketball. You know, we are just, we are all about basketball, and there's no better basketball in my eyes than Butler. You know, those Bulldogs, they can, people didn't even know they who watch, they yeah. were um, when they were when they were getting high in the conference and the, and the playoffs and everything. So tell us about how it all happened and the location that you're going to have at Butler. So we, I was contacted probably eight months ago, maybe a year ago, from a guy that said, hey, I, they, they're building a parking garage. I've heard they're going to put retail in. They're, temp they're playing around with the idea of bringing their first restaurant to campus because Butler has, they've, they've never allowed a bar or restaurant on campus you know, a couple hundred years, and they've never had one. And I thought, oh, they're never going to. I'll take the time. I'll go meet with some of the administrators and just see what, what they're thinking. So I went and met with them and had a good conversation and went away from it and thought, okay, let's see what happens. And a couple months go by, and you get you have a few emails, and they're like, you know, hey, are you still interested? And, I'm, and I said, yeah, yeah, I'm still interested. I need to see some numbers. What is the rent? And what's, you know, where is it going to go? And so finally we get, now the talk started getting serious, and they said, okay, you've made it through the, through the cut. And I said, what's the cut? And they said, well, we wanted to, we gave all of the faculty and students an opportunity to say, who do they want on campus? And you made the list. You made the top of the list. And so now we're ready to have real negotiations with you. And I thought, wow. So it wasn't just me trying to site select. It was them making sure that I was the right one that they wanted. And so when they gave, when they, when the opportunity was even there presented to me, I was all over it because to be the first bar on campus, to be the first restaurant, not only for the, the students and the faculty, but the community in that whole area. I just love, I love that area. I love that Meridian mm -hmm. Kessler, that Butler Tarkington area. And so 
we're wedged. So we're in the bottom of a parking garage. Wedged between Hinkle Field House. I mean, I could throw a baseball and hit Hinkle Field House, or I could turn the other direction and throw a baseball and hit Clues Hall. So now you've got us in, you know, you're serving the entire Butler student population. You've got basketball game traffic, you've got Clues Hall traffic, and you've got the whole Butler, Tarkington, Meridian, Kessler neighborhood that you're going to be serving. And there's not a lot of There's up nothing there, else over really. There's nothing in that area. So it's just. For me, it's a just a grand slam. I was so excited. And so what we did to even make it more unique, Butler's been so good to work with, is they said, you can use all of our marks, all of our trademarks. Uh, we want this to be our place, our unique place. And I said, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to call it Scotty's Brew House. I'm going to call it Scotty's Dog House. So we're you know playing off the bulldog. Um, we're using the Butler marks inside the restaurant. We're going to put a big frame picture of Butler Blue on the wall. And then on the wall, we're putting a big blank area where you can come in and if you own a bulldog, you can pin it up to the wall of you and your bulldog. Cool. So it's just going to be a, I'm just really excited about the, you know, we're it's still going to have the same menu and feel of a Scotty's brew house, but it's going to have the uniqueness of being on Butler's campus. And who would have ever thought 20 some years ago or 20 years ago when you opened Ball State and now you're going to actually have alcohol there too, right? right. Yep. For the um, first time in 20 years. That there would be another college in the future. You know, we, we, we've got Ball State, we're on IU's campus, we're on uh, Purdue's campus. Um, we opened up in Mishawaka a couple years ago, and so we're, we kind of consider that Notre Dame's neighborhood. Um, Butler is just in the mix. You know, that we're, we're still even looking at, we've got a couple more that I, I, I like. I like Indiana State, so Terre Haute has been on my radar. Uh, Evansville is on my radar. So those are probably the last two in the state that I really w would love to attack and, and put something on campus. Um, we're, we're in negotiations right now with Champaign-Urbana over in uh, University of Illinois. So that one tentatively would look to be around March of 2016. So Butler's going to open February of 2016. Uh, Champaign-Urbana should be March of 2016. We've also got a location in Kokomo that we're um, in negotiations with right now, and that would probably be first quarter of next year. And we've also got Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, wow. On top of all this other stuff, so and we're and we're opening another three wise men in Muncie in December. Yeah. Oh, that'll be so cool. That will be so cool. Well, I want to thank you. Um, make sure somebody invites me to the next next tasting we'll because those things are amazing, and you just really get to sample the the new things coming out. Yeah, you know, that's great. That I probably never would have ordered. <laughs> because of the names or what was in it but they all turned out great so um watch for our video we're going to be posting it on social media for you i'll send it to, send it to scotty so bruce and his team can do something with it if they want to um and thank you again for coming and the inspiration you give so many business owners and employees we are really and we're raising money in october for breast cancer awareness so if you do come by the restaurant either order one of the new burgers of the month because we'll get a dollar of that or grab a glass. We have a, a, a Milky Way milkshake that's coming out. And if you buy one Very of those, cool. you get to keep the glass and the portion of the proceeds goes to uh, prostate and breast cancer awareness. Very cool. And that's very close to you, I know. Yeah. So, all right. Well, um, we're working on guests for next week. Um, hopefully, we'll have a great one. I don't know how we, how we can outdo this week's. But um, thank you again for coming to see Hook Connections. And we will see you next week.